ao vivo. Oi. Hi guys, are you listening to me? Hello. Hello. Hi everybody. Hi. Hello. Okay, I'm sorry for the delay. It's my fault. Uh, my internet is having, we are having some problems here with the internet, but let's start now. Okay? Okay. So, uh, first of all, I'll ask you to introduce yourselves, tell uh, a little bit about what you do and your project. So, let's start with Matt. Matt, are you there? Yes, hello. Okay. Um, it's Matt McDonald. I um, program the showcases for the CMJ Music Marathon, which takes place okay. in New York every October. It's a showcase festival and music conference. Uh, during the daytime, we have uh, you know, seminars and panel discussions, and at nighttime, we have uh, showcases. And it takes place over five days and nights in New York. We had, uh, just about six weeks ago, it was the most recent one, it was the 33rd edition. We had uh, 1,300 artists performing at about 80 different venues. Okay, thanks. And Christoph. Hi, hello. Uh, my name is Christoph. I work for a festival promoter in Spain called Last Year International. And I'm project manager for the new music conference we are organizing uh, in November from the 19th to the 23rd was the first edition. Uh, we are trying to uh, find a, to, 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 to build a place for uh, mixing the new technologies and the music industries to find new ways of revenue for the music industry. And at the same time, it's a uh, place where platform for the uh, South American music markets to put, put them together with the European music markets. So we, uh, okay. it was the first edition this year, we had uh, 1,200 religious delegates. Uh, we, uh, we had uh, 8,000 people per day on the festival. Uh, so yeah, it's uh, quite positive. Mm. Really good because we met uh, at Mama, right? And yeah, we I did. Was really, yeah, and I was really uh, curious to know how how it was the first edition. So, what do you think? Was it good? What was it? What you what we you were expecting? Oh, well, it was really good. I mean, it was. I think that even more positive than we expected. Uh, the feedback from uh, the professionals is really, really interesting, and uh, all the institutions really want to bring more people from their own countries. And uh, it's really the all the conferences were really interesting. Uh, so yeah, it it was really positive. We are very happy with that. Okay, next year I'm going to go. Yes, please. Okay. You're invited. <laughs> okay, Daniel. Hello. Hello. Yes. Okay. So I am from. Uh, I am originally from Brazil, and uh, I live now in Israel for uh, seven years now. I've been. Uh, I'm a musician. I play cavaquinho. I have my uh, several groups here that play Brazilian music, choro and samba. And uh, for the past two years, I've been working on my uh, project of uh, a crowdfunding platform for music concerts. It's called uh, Octopus. And um, we started to work uh, this year. In, a, in a April, our first concert with, uh, was with a Scooby-Doo label artist, uh, Ricardo Hertz. And uh, and we are bringing several Brazilian artists. We, we are bringing now next Monday Yaman do Costa. We had here uh, Stephen Wilson, and uh, we had uh, Pierre Ben Susan, and we were working with uh, with some uh, with some uh, other producers here. And we hope to make uh, an open platform so that every every promoter can use this. Uh, this uh, this platform to to promote concerts in, in their own uh, cities. 
Great, thank you, Daniel. We also met at Mama, right? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And uh, Neil, we also met in Paris last October. So can yes. you tell us a little bit about yourself? Okay. My name is Neos, uh, and I am working in BCN Music Expo. It's an expo office, and uh, we will try to promote uh, Spanish bands around foreign countries. The reason uh, to meet in Mama is uh, because we we try to to visit or to meet uh, professional people in in this kind of, of events in festivals to create a network to help our bands. <coughs> okay, great. And finally, we have Flavio, who is a new uh, guest of this chat. So he's going to help me with this uh, moderate to moderate the chat here. Scooby, can you tell us about yourself? Sure. My name is Flavio. I run Scooby Doo Music here in São Paulo, Brazil. Um, I attended Mama in Paris as well last year, so I didn't meet, meet you all, but I met some of you. And uh, well, so we work both with Brazilian artists in Brazil as well, but also with foreign artists that, that want to tour in Brazil. Something similar to what Fabiana does with uh, We are all very excited about Mama. Uh, and we'd like to create a debate about uh, how we can all the, put all these pieces together in the puzzle. So to promote artists either in Brazil and abroad, how is and well the, the the theme here is how to call the attention, right? How to attract the attention from uh, either the public and the programmers. So I think we are up to a good start. Yes. Yeah, so um, as you asked, how how can we attract more attention to Brazil and? What do you think of that, guys? You that work abroad, uh, how how do you see Brazil nowadays for music market? Uh, well. <laughs> okay, anyone? Okay, I can I can start. Okay. Uh, so we. Uh, from the point of view, uh, from the point of view of Israel, uh, every market is is a difficult one because we have a, the whole population of Israel is uh, seven million people, and uh, if we talk a city about Tel Aviv, which is the biggest uh, cultural center of Israel, we're talking about maybe six hundred thousand people. So um, it's always very difficult to bring any kind of artist here because an artist that uh, has uh, that in, in Brazil they might play for a crowd of uh, 3,000 people the same artist will play here maybe for 500 people and uh, and they are not uh, and, and especially Brazilian artists which are very which are successful in Brazil and um, they they are probably trying to travel abroad uh, with the same uh, prices, the same fees that uh, that they are uh, they are working in Brazil, and uh, and also Brazil has a lot of uh, of cultural uh, cultural uh, uh, help, like the government helps a lot with culture and uh, also institutions and laws, and uh, and not and not everywhere uh, is the same, so. Uh, so here, when we try to promote Brazilian uh, artists, we we have always this kind of difficulty. The the prices are not uh, compatible to to the reality of the of the public here. But uh, it's also so we we work with artists that we can bring. We try to we try to bring solo acts. You know, we try to talk to. To a big artist to see if he can come without the band and come solo. Um, so that's that's how we feel here about uh, Brazilian uh, artists. Also, we try to get help from the embassy, but it's also not not every time it is possible.
Acho que você está no mudo, Fabi. Sorry, guys. So I would like to ask uh, Matt and Christo, uh, yeah. what are your suggestions to an artist that is going to play in a music convention? What does he do to call attention? Do you have any suggestion, anything you should uh, tell artists that are listening to us? Uh, just in terms of once once they've been invited to play and they've been booked, what they can do to help help out. Yeah, so, because yeah. I, I mean, because when, when artists go to a music convention, there are so many options for the professionals who are there. Yeah, uh, a lot of shows sometimes at, at the same time. So, what do you think an artist should do to attract these professionals to his show to call well, attention? I think it's really important in advance to know sort of what your goals are as an artist coming into the event and you know especially in the case of a place like CMJ um, where there are so many artists performing um, just the fact that you are performing doesn't mean people are going to show up at your show so even before you decide to come you need to think about well will I be able to bring 50 people or 100 people or 200 people or you know depending on, on where you're playing and sometimes I think it's smarter to to say no to things if you're not quite ready. So, you know, I think that's really important. Um, now, if you've decided that you do have an audience, uh, I think it's important to decide this is what we want to get out of our appearance or appearances at, at this festival. Uh, we're, we want to get a U.S. booking agent. We want to get a lawyer. We want to get, you know, a publishing deal. We want to get booked at a festival in Norway, whatever it is. Um, Make that make that list of things that you want to get, and then you know, go step by step to try and get you know, five booking agents in the room. Use your contacts. Um, maybe you just want to meet other bands. You know, it's really it's really, you know, depending on what you're trying to do, uh, you really just need to focus on on those aspects and and get those those people there. Well, yeah, I I quite agree with. Uh I quite agree with Matt. I think that we you have to work very a lot long time before the event to, to contact everybody. I think we, on on our music conference you have no not so many eyes at the same time, but uh, well the the delegates have so many distractions. They can they can just go for dinner or, or something different. It's really difficult for them to 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 get the attention of, of the delegates. So it's really important to to have as many people as possible. I think that it's really important to have some support from uh, the institution that can help you in bringing uh, delegates to the gig. I think that the manager has a lot to do before. I mean, he has to contact, I think, everybody. I think that it's, it's really important to have objectives, but I think that you have to be able to talk to everybody. I mean, it's uh, without without having any prejudice or just thinking about that every delegate here are uh, trying to do some business so they are looking for a new act, something really interesting so I think that's more or less everybody can be interested on a music conference and I think it's really important to get as much people as everybody but the thing is you have to communicate a lot before Okay, and do, do you have any, any kind of feedback after the festival? Like, do, do bands uh, write you to say, oh, I could uh, do a lot of business in CMJ? Uh, does it happen? Do you know what happens after the festival? Um, sometimes. I wish, I wish we had more information um, because there isn't a formal process and, you know, with, with 1,300 bands, it's, you, you can't really do it. But sometimes, um, sometimes you do hear, like there was a French band this morning who reached out and said, uh, you know, they had a great experience. They got uh, invited to play South by Southwest after CMJ and, you know, a couple of other things. So we always like to hear that because, you know, because we can't be at every show and every, every performance. It is good to hear, like, hey, we actually, you know, we came from Brazil and, and got a, a booking agent or, or whatever it is. Uh, but there is no formal process. I wish we did have something. 
Yeah, I agree. I agree. I, I'd like to have some more feedback from the bands. But yes, some of them told, tells us that. I mean, uh, not only because uh, they had people during the gig, but because the manager has been uh, doing some roadblocks of, of networking during, during the day conference. I think it's really important having meetings that maybe the delegate can't go to the gig, but at the end you have a deal at the end. After after the music conference, so I yeah I, I love having more, but I, I know that on on Vime that uh, many artists had some really good results, so it was like very positive at this point, and uh, well yeah I think it's uh, uh, it's difficult to know, but uh, it's uh, we'd like to have to receive much more from from the bands at this level. Okay. I think it's also yeah. sorry, but I, I think it's also part of our job. I think the bands has to, they have to bother a little bit the, the project managers and the, all the people in the organization. We are in contact with a lot of people, so maybe we are the good person who can uh, introduce the ma the manager of the band to other delegates that can be interesting. It's what happened. On a, a band called Jinga from Austria, we I, I went to the gig and uh, I was with the music promoter, a pr a promoter of uh, the Summer Sonic Festival in Japan, and he just he went there and after three minutes he just asked me who's the manager, please. So yeah, it was like something. These kind of things can happen. So I think it's yeah, I think it's it's a good thing if you the music managers push a little bit the. Uh, the organization to get in touch with uh, as many people as possible. Yeah, uh, in my point yeah. of view, sorry, uh, I think no that problem. it's interesting the, 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 the two points of view because it's true that the manager and the manager companies or the management companies needs to do a, a lot of uh, work before the festivals, but it's also true that the festival um, needs to program or to to create a, a, a showcases that in the right way. I mean, that if you have a, a lot of showcases at the same time, or you have a lot of clubs or a lot of stage with different uh, bands playing in the same schedule, it's difficult to convince uh, booking agencies or publishing or this kind of, of keys people in each country to, to create a, a, an interest for them. So, for example, in, in BIME, it was great because it was just three stages or, or three clubs with showcases uh, and really close uh, each other. So it will be easy to move the people around in this kind of clubs. You know, if the, 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 the festival is really big and there are a lot of clubs, it's difficult to move it. I think so. Well, that's one okay. problem that I see uh, because Matt mentioned that you have to promote your concert, get to know your audience and everything. And one thing is, it may get people into the concert, but remember, there's other concerts going on at the same time. And sometimes, and this is difficult for artists, and it's complicated to, to explain to them, but they need a snapshot, they need their concert, it's going to be very short, to be a snapshot what they want to uh, promote as an image. So it can happen that people walk in, and you're playing like a very slow song, and then they walk out and they say, yeah, the guy playing the slow song. And they have the image of your act like that. So it's a showcase is not a full show, and artists need to understand that. Uh, it's just to give a glimpse of what you can have in a full show. But if you try to make a story, you might lose a lot of your audience that will walk away. If you try, for example, for an introspective moment, if it's not the right time for it. So uh, it's and it's something difficult for artists to to accept. Yeah. Uh, Neus, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what you're doing with, in Barcelona to promote yeah. the artists, the local artists? Sure. Uh, we try to be in contact with the management company, and uh, we try to uh, to visit or to be in the main uh, professional events or, or or festivals. We try to start to work in this uh, in planning this this. Festivals, maybe with two months or or sometimes even three months before the festival, trying to uh, contact with the main uh, levels or, for example, booking agencies, uh, in order to find the the the, the switchable 
uh, a ban for the suitable level or the suitable agent for the suitable ban. This is the idea to create the bridge or the, the, the network. So after that, we when we finish this this pre or this to to, to this uh, main uh, job, we try to to go to the festival to be in contact with this uh, with these people to convince. Uh, to visit our showcases if we have a ban in this festival. And after that, I think the most important job is be after the, the festival. When we arrive at home and we try to, 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 to set all the, all the contacts in order to, to, to start with, a, with an important following of these contacts. And this is when we, we realize that we can make business with them. This is the idea, or the main idea. We try also in the other, in the opposite side. With, in this kind of festivals, you can find a lot of uh, um, people that is looking for bands, maybe for for for, for Spain. This is the example, and uh, we try to find this this suitable bands when we arrive at home. So not always we have a roster, a close roster. I mean, uh, we are open to a new bands, and maybe we can find the the the, the best uh, the best band for the best level or the best booking, or in in the other side. Okay, is there any kind of support from the government that can help uh, the local bands to go abroad? In 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 Spain, it's it, 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 it's uh, it's true. The, the 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 government and the the public administration is uh, helping for the. I think that is a forty percent of the investment of the travels and the and the, and the hotels and the the, 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 the flights or the, the transportation uh, issues. So it's true that the government it's it's helping the 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 bands to go outside to go abroad. Okay. I don't know in the other countries, but in Spain is is it's true. Yeah, I know uh, France has a great uh, support for bands. Brazil is a little difficult. And Matt in CMJ, uh, how, how do you work with the bands? How how do you choose the bands that are going to play every year? And um, how, how how does it happen? Do they have to go by their own? Uh, can you tell us a, a little bit about the lineup? Yeah, sure. <clears throat> so we have um, we have a submission process, and um, me and um, my team will listen to everything. The most important thing, obviously, is the music. Um, so if we like, we kind of we go through everything, um, separate into music. It's sort of a yes, no and a maybe. And so we'll go back, um, once we've you know, listened to everything, we'll take a look at the bio, the press, the tour history, and you know, try and get a sense of where the artist is at with their career. Have they had much success in their local territory, um, or are they still brand new? And you know, especially if we're going to invite somebody from, let's say, Brazil, um, we need to make sure that if they're going to go to the expense of making the trip, that they actually will have an audience. And sometimes it makes sense to wait a couple of years while they establish themselves in, in Brazil and South America um, because if they don't have any profile, obviously nobody's going to come to the club, and that's not good for the artist. It's not good for the festival. Um, so, so that's really what we're looking for is, is a band. You know, and we work with very small uh, up-and-coming artists for the most part. So you know, there is a little bit of sort of guessing going on, but... Um, but yeah, so once we invited them, it is up to them to come to New York on their own. We don't have the budget to to fund their travel. So we have about 20% international participation. And a lot of the time, the um, they will get some government support. And, um, you know, countries that are good with that right now, um, Canada is really good, France, like um, somebody mentioned, um, New Zealand, Australia... Um, let's see. There's a few others. Um, Brazil has a little bit, but I think they're still trying to work on sort of the process and the funding and how that all works. Um, so that's that is one of the the problems is that there may be great music coming from somewhere, but if um, if we can't afford to bring the artists out and the artists can't afford to come out and there's no support, then it's impossible to make it work. And do you have a lot of uh do many Brazilian bands apply uh, um, to go to CMJ? Do you have many options? We we probably had about 20 this year, and I think we invited three. Um, 
I can't quite remember. I know there, there were definitely... Yeah, there was definitely... There was two or three. I can't quite remember the exact number, but... Okay. Yeah, um, there's definitely interest, and I think as, as sort of... You know, more Brazilians are looking, especially, I feel like the music scene in Brazil right now um, is, is really strong, um, especially with, you know, sort of the non-traditional music. Um, so I think as, as that becomes more, more, um, more strong and, you know, maybe there's a little bit more funding on the government side for, for music, hopefully we'll be able to invite more. Okay. There is one uh, issue here in Brazil, and we are trying to discuss that during uh, Sim São Paulo this week. That is, uh, when we see an international band from US or Europe uh, launching something new, like a CD or starting a new tour, we always see that they have the whole world, or almost the whole world, as their territory, you know, to explore. With digital music uh, in the tour, so they can go abroad um, easier than a Brazilian band. So you want, we want to talk about that here in Brazil a lot this week. How can we, how can the Brazilian bands have the same opportunity and have the same uh, territory as the other bands around the world to work their music? So can you see that happen in US or in Europe like for the Spanish guys here and can you see that happen? What do you think is the main problem for a Brazilian band uh, go abroad? Like, is that the language, or how do you see that? Well, um, I, 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 I don't think it's about the language or the music. I think that um, I, I quite agree with Daniel uh, when he told about the, the cost of uh, sometimes the Brazilian bands. It's, I think it's not only the Brazilian bands, uh, it's, I think it's all the, the, the bands who have to cross the ocean to come to Europe. I think that the, the expenses are, are quite high, and uh, I must say that the Brazilian bands are usually quite uh, with lots of people. I think we have a, a, a big traveling party all the time. I think it's, it would be great having like, smaller bands, which would make things easier for all the, all the bookers in Europe. Yeah, I think it's, the, I, think, I would say the main problem can be the, the cost more than everything else. I think, um, I think that the music and, and the language it's are, are not an issue at all for us, I think. Flavio, what's the, the main problem you have to, to get a band outside Brazil? Well, I think the first time is always the most difficult one. Uh, the first time uh, when you go abroad, they have this thing, uh, who came first, the record or the, the tour agency. So if you try to license your album, uh, <laughs> which is like a little different, they, they're going to ask you, do you have a, uh, an agency that is working with you guys? And if you look for an agency, they ask, do you have a label that is releasing your record? So um, it is a problem the first time. But whenever you you you, uh, you go to for the first trip or the first tour, either in Europe or in the US, things are easier. First of all, you already have a network, and people trust you if you did a good, a good job. So they will be ha uh, happy to bring you back if you had a good performance, uh, if you agreed to uh, uh, to whatever agreement you had, uh, if you're not a pain in the ass when you showed up uh, at the venue. Uh, if all the conditions are clear most probably will be back to that place in one or two years and then you build an audience. So indeed the most difficult part is the first time uh, and then well the other ones are difficult in the sense that you have to do a great job. So with time you can create a network and eventually if you have an agency that is working with you it's way easier and then you should define the territories. If you have an agency that uh, will cover uh, a few countries in Europe or the whole of the continent, well, it's your choice. You have to see if you trust them to give your artists to spend like a, uh, a long time with the, this one agency or not. It's case by case, you know. Okay. We have a, a recently a, a band from Brazil, a very new band called Bugarins from Goiânia. 
and they were signed by uh, Ground Control to Rain in US, which is a great agency. So we are really exciting about. Um, we, we are asking ourselves what's what's going to happen with them. Is it going to work with uh, a big agents outside, and what's going to happen? So, uh, Daniel, do you, do you work with local bands there? Um, I work with uh, a few local bands, uh, mostly the bands I'm I play in. And uh, but I think uh, I think what you said before about uh, about uh, Brazilian artists uh, going abroad. Uh, one other thing that uh, that we must uh, that that I think should be more explored in Brazil is that what you see in the United States is that uh, the local artists they they have their own continent to to travel in. Uh, artists in the U.S. they are traveling all the time inside the, uh, the U.S. and uh, and in Brazil I think it's much more difficult. You know I see artists in São Paulo they are going to Rio but they are traveling a lot in the maybe uh, inside uh, places near São Paulo but it's still very hard to explore uh, the whole of Brazil uh, and. Uh, and also, of course, uh, to go abroad is even harder. And uh, here, what what I what I see with the bands that uh, I play in, and that, uh, uh, for example, I have one band that we we are playing a uh, choro music, Brazilian music here in Israel, and we found that the only two places that uh, we are interesting in is here and in Brazil. So we. So we have toured in Israel many times, and we have toured uh, also three times in Brazil, uh, as as an Israeli band playing uh, playing Brazilian traditional music. So I think uh, another thing to be noticed by any band that is trying to to go abroad is to I think they should focus before in a, in a place that they see that they may have already. A uh, maybe a small, a small interest. Uh, maybe a place that has a big Brazilian community. Uh, I don't know. Here, the the concerts that we bring here that are uh, Brazilian artists, we focused uh, we focus a lot of the of our uh, PR and advertising efforts on the Brazilian community. Okay. Nails, what are the, the big dif difficulties you are having to get the Spanish bands abroad? Um, the main difficulty is not just for the band. Sometimes the main difficulty is because the company or the management is not uh, really prepared to, to export bands. But if you ask me for, for the bands, Sometimes the main difficult it's the language, not not really the the main difficult, but sometimes uh, if the if the band is playing in Spanish language is maybe a little difficult if the band it's playing in English, um, and maybe I don't know why, but uh, maybe the pittiness it's a big uh, it's a big wall for us if we. Want to be, uh, we want to explore uh, European markets, or sometimes I feel that the the the, the, the mountains, the Pyrenees, that it, for example, to arrive or to to get in French market, it's the same uh, difficult that to be in uh, Brazil or or Chile or this kind of countries for for the ocean, for the for the Atlantic Ocean, it's the same difficult, but. Uh, I'm not, I, I feel that the, the main difficult is for the for the um, for the business uh, point of view of the ban and in the main step for the management company in fact because in the Spanish uh, the Spanish market is not really used to uh, ex uh, export uh, music so now it's difficult to move bands abroad for this reason. For, the, for for marketing or for for business issues, in fact. Even in in Europe, because uh, in Europe we see a lot of English bands, French bands, 
And who are the Spanish bands that are touring around and working well in Europe? Yeah, I mean, this is the, the, what, I, what I'm trying to say, that sometimes uh, I feel that, uh, you know, the, the, the Spanish or the Spain, sometimes uh, the people is thinking just in one style of music, for example, flamenco or something like that, or mestizaje music. I don't know if it is the same in Brazilian bands that uh, they are uh, fixed or setting just in, an, in a kind of a style. And sometimes it's really difficult to broke the, 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 this, this idea or this feeling because it, it's true that in Spain we have a, a really, really uh, uh, big, big potential bands in rock area, in electronic area, thanks to a very important festivals in, for example, Sonar or Primavera in, in, in Barcelona. So it's curious mm. that the people, when think about Spain, it's thinking in this kind of styles music. Maybe this is the reason, or one of the reasons. Okay. Flavio, um, do you, I, I know you have some questions for everybody. Well, so some of the questions no. were, were already asked. Uh, but, but indeed, like um, one of the questions I was going to say was about the showcases, uh, the selection process. So, which one of you, Matt, explained that his yes, no, maybe process, which is very clear and very makes total sense. Uh, I'd like to know maybe uh, more about uh, uh, Christopher. So, well, well, Christoph, what do you think, and how do you select the bands? What makes the difference for you? Like I, yeah, it's quite the same one than Matt. I mean, it's really yes, no, maybe, and uh, it's really on a artistic basis. Uh, not so much about who the manager or I mean, we re what I, I mean. Our idea is that the bands will find uh, uh, maybe an agent or I mean, we are not thinking about what the. Um, the, the future of the band in, in the country. We are more thinking about uh, they have to be just amazing bands on stage. Uh, yeah. It's really on an artistic basis uh, because I think that all the delegates uh, who are attending a music conference have seen so many bands, so it's difficult to get them impressed. So we just have to find the the best ones and uh, the the newcomers as well because. Uh, the professionals usually go to uh, many music conferences, so it's difficult for them to be surprised, and uh, and uh, and they usually see lots of new bands. So we are trying to find really like the the, the next sound, if if it's possible. I think it's it's really difficult, but it's it's what we are trying to do. I mean, with the amount of material that you receive. Uh, do you have time to go and explore yourself and find things and ask them to come? Yeah, I think it's necessary. I mean, we we can't we can't be only on a on a passive way as waiting for uh, the band submitting their the songs. I think it's really important to 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 try to to look for these new bands. Uh, so yeah, we 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 did that as well. Yes, sure. And I'm I don't know if if Matt is doing the same thing, but I think it's. Uh, it, it's important to also be curious and to find new new acts we, we like. Okay, so I have a question for uh, most of you actually. Uh, except your own conference, which let's say two other conferences do you think are very relevant for you uh, in the year calendar that we have? So let's start with uh, from from my left to right. You start, Crystal. Uh, I would say Eurosonic. Yeah. Eurosonic in, in Europe, in, in Groningen, Poland. And uh, the second one maybe could be uh, CMJ, of course. <laughs> yeah, good answer. Yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. So, Nils, what about you? For me, in fact, uh, it's difficult to, to define because uh, for me, a lot of festivals are really important. Eurosonic is one of them, but uh, we have another ones uh, in Europe that uh, we think that they are important as well. For example, the Great Escape or Ripper Van in Germany, or maybe Mixur in Argentina, and I hope that Sim 
uh, for a long for a lot of years. <laughs> Brilliant. What about you, Matt? Um, I think the Great Escape in uh, Brighton in May is uh, is a really good one, and I, and Eurosonic too. Brilliant, Fabi. Uh, you are sit on mode, Fabi. Okay, I would say see São Paulo. <laughs> and I said accept your own. No, <laughs> no uh, I really like Mama. It's a new one, and we are all based in uh, in the. We, we try to bring the format of Mama to São Paulo, and we. I have to say some festivals here in South America that are going well, like uh, Amplifica and Articulatis. Amplifica is in Chile. And Articulatis is in Colombia. And uh, I also like the Great Scape. I, I like South by Southwest, but it's too big now, I think, and it's losing the the essence, I think. And C CMJ, I'm, I'm really a, a big fan of CM CMJ also. Daniel? Uh... I'm going. I, I I don't really know the answer for that because I've been uh, only to one festival to the Mama, but uh, I think this is more relevant. Uh, uh, depending on my own taste, I, I'm interested in world music, so I would go to the Womex as well. Brilliant, brilliant. Well, on my end, um, I really like Mama this year. I'm definitely going back next year. And uh, Womex, I've been going for a few years right now, but I have to say it was a little disappointing this year. It's still a great meeting place for the people that I like and the people that uh, have a similar taste to what I do, but I uh, was a little disappointed this year, so we'll see what promises it. And, well, I have to say, I really enjoyed Jazz I had in Germany last year, so I'm going again in 2014. Okay, yeah, I, I, I don't like the idea of a festival who is inside a, how can I say in English? A, a, a pavilion big or something. warehouse. Yeah, yeah, like a warehouse or something like that, where you just build the stage and everybody's there like on their own stands. I don't like this kind of, uh, I don't like very much this kind of festival. I like the uh, MAMA format, like that's what we're trying to see, that the Great Scape or South by Southwest, and what we're trying to do here in Sao Paulo, that we use the city as the scenario, you know, the, the city is like one of the attractions of the festival and we use our venues and our promoters and so people that come to Brazil can see exactly how things work here with the fans and with the city. Oh, I, I really like this kind of festivals. Yeah, it's great for yeah, the atmosphere. No, my idea when I am visiting different events is to find a lot of professionals or the, 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 the the, the, the most quantity of professionals in this in this event. So it's important what Fabiana is telling us because sometimes if you are uh, I don't know if you use different tools for promote these festivals, for example, the city or the the, the, the environment of the city, it's easier that the professional feels that it's it's good to go to to these festivals, and this is an important reason to be there. Yeah. Indeed. Okay, uh, does anyone would like to say anything else and just like a final final line or a, I don't know, a lucky word or, <laughs> I don't know. I think, I think I'd, like to, I'd like to go back to what I said before about uh, Brazilian artists and uh, I think every, art, every artist who is aiming to travel abroad um, he really has to uh, to try to, to see the offers he has and uh, and aim to the places he's going to uh, like aim to the reality to the of the places that he's aiming to go to and um, and then trying to be as flexible as possible if he wants his music to to be known in uh, in other places. Okay, Flavio, your last words. 
Well, I think that the advice for, since we're talking a lot about conferences and events like that, is it's very typical, but it's very important. It's follow up. You meet a lot of people, don't forget to follow up. That's very important. Okay, Matt? Uh, keep practicing and playing shows, and hopefully see you in New York or, or Sao Paulo soon. Yes. Nails? Nails is in. Hello. No, Christoph. Well, yeah, I just want to invite everybody uh, to, to come to BMA next year. Uh, we are really trying to build a platform for uh, the South American music professionals who would like to get in touch with uh, European ones and uh, North American ones as well. I think it's we, we're going to really try to create something new in Europe and uh, so everybody is really invited to come and, uh, and take part of it. Okay. Nails, are you back? No. So, uh, I, I would like uh, to thank you very much, really, for your time and to be 